us understand maybe a little more clearly what epigenetics is exactly and why is it important for us to, to really understand it? Well, let's first understand where most of the public has been programmed with a belief about genetics. And that belief deals with the fact that at the moment of conception, we say, we receive a set of genes from our mother and our father, and they come together. And that from the story, uh, genes are determining the character of our lives, not just our physical, but emotional and behavior. Uh, and I say, well, why is that relevant? Because I say, well, if we teach that genes control these and that genes turn on and off by themselves, that's what people hear, a gene turned on. And I go, okay, now put that in perspective. Uh, the genes control the characteristics. And as far as we know, we didn't pick the genes we came with. So if we don't like the characteristics, too bad. You've got the genes, supposedly. Uh, and uh, the idea, can you change those genes? Well, no, you can't. Uh, and then you find out the genes are turning on and off by themselves. And then you start to realize that we are teaching victimization, that people are victims of their heredity. And I say, but what's the primary consequence of a victim? And this is it, being powerless. We are programming people to believe they have no power in the unfolding of their internal and external life experiences. And that is based on the uh, genetics. Uh, and I say, but there's a new science, which I was fortunately a pioneer back 50 some years ago to observe this new science, and that is that it's called epigenetics. And you go, well, it sounds like the same thing. And I go, no, epi means above. So like, for example, the, na the name for skin and anatomy is called epidermis, because just underneath the layer of the top layer of skin is another layer called the dermis. And so epidermis means above the dermis, and that's skin. So I say, well, what about epigenetics? Well, I say, old story. This character or behavior or emotion is under genetic control, controlled by genes. New story. This character is under epigenetic control. They go, what does that mean? I say, literally, it says this. Control epi above the genes. I go, what do you mean? I say, the control is not in the genes. The belief that genes turn on and off by themselves, that they're self-actualizing, is a completely false statement. A gene is a blueprint that makes a protein, and the body is built out of about 100,000 different proteins. That's our anatomy, and our physiology comes from protein. I say, so what's a gene? It's a blueprint to make these complex molecules. I go, so why is it relevant? I say, just recognize blueprint. I go, what does that mean? I say, go into an architect's office and she's working on a blueprint and ask her, hey, is your blueprint on or off? And she would look at you like, it's a blueprint. There's no on and off. I go, precisely that blueprints are meant to be read, not they don't control themselves. And I said, well, then what reads the blueprints? Epigenetics means above the genes. And I say, what's that? The mind, consciousness, is what controls your biology. And I go, well, why is that relevant? Because you can control your consciousness, and therefore you can control the character of your life experience. I go, so what's the difference? I go, the story that almost everybody's been programmed with uh, uh, below the level of science and academia, <laughs> the public, has been programmed with a belief I'm a victim that genes control my life and I have no control and I'm powerless. And then we turn around and go, oh my God, the whole new science of heredity is epigenetics, which says your consciousness is controlling your genes. And I go, so why is that important? I say, you have the power to change your consciousness. So all of a sudden it says, wait a minute, if my consciousness is controlling my genes, I'm not a victim, I am a master of my biology if I understand the nature of how my consciousness works, I am uh, capable of changing our genetics. The mind is controlling genes. And just to, before I end that very, give a, a positive thing that people know about. And I go, mind controls biology? And I go, if you've heard of the placebo effect, uh, uh, which is responsible for uh, more than one third and up to two thirds of all medical healing, I say, what is that? I say, well, you're told that this special new pill is going to heal you from that disease that you have. And you believe it. Oh my God, this is the newest pill. You take it, you get better. And then you find out the pill is a sugar pill. 
And I go, well, then what healed you? And clearly was your belief in the pill. And I go, oh yeah, positive thinking led to healing. I go, yes, it does. But just most important is this, left out of the conversation is, what about negative thinking? It's like, we don't talk about it. I go, oh my God, negative thinking is equally powerful in controlling your life as is positive thinking, but it doesn't take you toward health. It takes you toward sickness and disease. And all of a sudden I go, oh my God, we never talk about negative thinking. I go, you know, the proportion of negative versus positive thinking is not balanced at all. We have much more negative thinking in our belief system than we have positive. I say, so what's the result? Positive thinking enhances your life. Negative thinking compromises your life. We are compromising our own lives because we've never been informed how we create this life from science. Now, Master Ming Tung, he's, he's been doing this for years, but it comes from an ancient spiritual awareness. And I want people to understand very briefly is that quantum physics, which is, the I got to emphasize this, the most valid of all the sciences on this planet is quantum physics. And I go, and what's the significance of quantum physics, the most truthful science? And the answer is, according to this science, consciousness is creating our life experience. Well, then basically, the ancient wisdom that the master is bringing to us and the modern science, which is in our face right now, come together. Spirituality and science are now saying the same thing. And it's really wonderful because we left spirituality when we said, oh, science is the truth provider, but now science is providing the truth that our spiritual character is what is controlling not just our internal life experiences, our health, but what happens in the world around us. And uh, today's world is uh, uh, in a very strange situation trying to talk to our consciousness and say, you got to do something different <laughs> at this point. And so thank you both. I'm sorry for the long uh, answer to that question, Nathan uh, and Master Ming Tong, uh, but this was important for me. Why? Science and spirituality are telling us the exact same story. It is time to, and I have to admit personally, I just want to bring this in. Personally, I became aware of the science God 50 years ago, uh, and I couldn't wait to tell people about the new science of epigenetics because if you understood it, you create your life. So I went out there in the early days and I said, from my conscious awareness of science, let me tell you how to create the most wonderful life. And the audience would look at me and go, you know, Lipton, your life doesn't look that good for a guy who says you know it. And I started to realize the biggest problem, and that's where spirituality has come from and science is coming from. It's not the awareness alone. It's the application of the awareness. There's talking the talk, which I was doing, but I wasn't walking the talk. And once I heard, I heard that in my head, I said, oh my God, you, you can't go out and tell people about how you can create the most wonderful life if you're not doing it. So guess what? I learned how to make it part of my life. And now, uh, honestly, uh, Nathan, uh, Master Ming Tong, I, if there's a heaven, I am living in this heaven here on earth because if we take the spiritual message, but own it as a scientific reality, it has been in four years. We are what we are, and I come home. And so thank you very much for letting me stand on the soapbox and talk for a minute. <laughs> no, I mean, I can listen to you all day long. I mean, you clearly are a testament to living a life <laughs> of heaven on earth. I mean, look at the waterfall behind you. You get to do these live streams in the jungle. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, everything I, is a creation. Every, <laughs> as as uh, quantum physics, the universe is immaterial, it's mental and spiritual. That is. The, the universe is immaterial, it's mental and spiritual. And I go, where did that quote come from? And it's like, 
from the journal Nature, the most prestigious scientific journal on this planet. That is the concluding sentence from uh, Professor of Physics Richard Con Henry in an article in the most prestigious scientific journal that says what you're experiencing is mental and spiritual. And then they conclude, live and enjoy. And that's why we're all here. We hope you enjoyed this short excerpt from the Health and Healing Club. This entire video, including an in-depth discussion and thoughtful and inspiring questions and answers, is available inside the Health and Healing Club, along with hundreds of hours of premium and exclusive life-changing content, practices, and holistic, natural, and integrative solutions for health and healing. You can start your free trial today at healthandhealingclub.com.